Hey, Nature Journal people, I'm John Muir Laws, and I want to invite you on an amazing worldwide nature journaling event. You see, there's something, it's a really big deal happening. In just a few days, it's going to be the solstice, the solstice. And all over the world, here's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see all of us nature journaling, journalers, um, do the same project, do the same project all over the globe and track the path of the sun across the sky. And, and, and do this in a way that's going to allow us to quantify it and to compare it because this is, this is, this is a big, this is a big deal and it can, it's going to be really fun. So our summer solstice is coming and I'm going to show you the, the, the template for how we can collect our information. And then I'm going to show you how to make your own. And what you're going to be doing is you are going to be making your own hinge. Your own hinge. So not stone hinge. This is paper hinge. And paper hinge is going to be inside your own journal. And it is going to be uh, allow you to kind of track the positions of the sun in the sky. So we're going to do this at this solstice. We're going to visit, revisit this at the equinox. And again, in the winter sol solstice coming up. So, all right, so this is, this is going to be really cool. So you're going to want to make this template page. We're going to put all three of those events on the same page. And then you're going to be able to compare your journal page that is specific for your latitude and longitude with the journal pages of people all around the globe. It's going to be really cool. And you're going to learn something about the way that the planet works that is going to blow your mind. It's going to be really fun. So let's check out um, how uh, what the page is going to look like and how we're going to set that up. And uh, here we go. All right. So this is, is my template. This is my template for the page that I'm going to be uh, doing for my, my, my tracking of solstices and, and equinox. And what you've got here is across the bottom are, is the 360 degree compass. So starting at zero here, going over here to 360. So from north to north. And above that, I have drawn, I've gone out to a uh, middle of a playground, actually, near my home, and I have sketched the 360-degree landscape of what I can see around here. So this is, I'm using this side because I can get to it easily from my house. I'm going to fill this in a little bit more and make it a little bit more fun, but um, this is what it, what it looks like. So I've got, I've got a school, I've got a few key trees, I've got a basketball hoop, all at specific places um, along this. So you notice I've got 0, 20, all right, 90 degrees is here, 180 is here, all right, 270 in the west, and 360 back here at the north. Um, so the, uh, and if you look up this way, I have from 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30, all the way up to 90 degrees up here. So this is... 90 degrees is directly over your head. So if I put a little spot here, if the sun gets directly over my head, it's going to go there. And this is all the, the this is the height in the sky this way. So I've got north, south this way. I've got height this way. I'm going to walk you through how to make your own graph that's going to be specific for, for your notes in, in just a moment. All right. Let's put that aside. And and see uh, how to do this. I'm, I'm first, I've, I've opened a journal, um, and, and here's, here's what, I, uh, what I want you to do, is if you are in the northern hemisphere, then north is gonna be at the two sides, and south is gonna be right there in the middle of your binding. If, however, you are in the southern hemisphere, then, north is going to be in the middle, and it's going to be south 
and south. So if you're in the southern hemisphere, it's going to go south, then west, then north, then east, and then south again. In the northern hemisphere, it's going to be north, east, south, west, north again. Right? And I'm going to uh, design this page as I would for somebody in the northern hemisphere. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to draw in a line. And this is going to be just uh, my horizon line. And right in the middle here, um, where these two pages come together, again, that's going to be south. And so I'm then going to draw little tick marks every two centimeters. So two, four, six. And I'm going to do that to get evenly spaced marks, so I have all of the even limits here. So if, and I'm going to do the same going out in this direction, so from the edge of the page here, uh, let's see, I'm going to go there. Four, two, so I am just taking a little bit of time at the start here to be organized and kind of get a template that I am going to, to be able to use. So I've got these little marks evenly, evenly spaced out here. And what I'm going to get is that over, over here, this is going to be zero degrees. And then I'm going to jump over the next little tick mark will be 20 degrees, 40, 60, 80, 100, nope, I just wrote 110, but that actually should be 120, shouldn't it? 120, though, and 40, um, 160, and 180. All right, so um, if your journal, like mine, here, this one, um, you can actually write all the way to the margin. I put 180 right there in the middle. And so south will be right there along the margin of the book. But in this case, because I've got this binding here, I'm actually going to kind of double up on the 180. So I'm going to have 180. There again, right? 80, then here's 200. And you get the idea. We're going to write in all those all the way from 0 to 360. Uh, well, let's just go ahead and do it. That's um, 220, 240, 260, 280. 300, 320, 340 degrees, and 360 degrees. All right, so now we're going to put in directions. So this is going to be north, way over here. And if you want to, you can use bubble letters. All right? Right here, that's going to be south. Oops, no, it's not. It's going to be east. And right here is south. 
Here's south. All right. At 270 degrees. I should put that a little bit further that way. That's going to be west. And over here, we're back to north. All right. Now, so this is going to be my, uh, my, my, my directions. And then what I'm going to ask you to do is to, along this line, you are going to be, um, or sorry, parallel with this line, we're going to be creating lines in the sky. And so there is 10 degrees, 20, 30, You want to do this before the solstice because you're going to be, as you'll see in a moment, you're going to be plenty busy on the solstice itself. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So here's 60 degrees. So let's check 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees. All right. So along this line here, so it's a couple things to notice. On my horizontal axis, um, just to kind of make things fit, 10 degrees is this far. But in this axis, 10 degrees is this far, so I've got an exaggerated vertical scale. Um, so that means if I've got a tree that's round, it's going to end up being an oval on this. What I, what I do is I, I look, I go out to a spot near where I live, which I can get to very easily. And I want to do a 360 degree drawing. So I'm going to do, draw a landscape, just very kind of low down here across the bottom of what I see in 360 degrees. And when you do this, I'm going to really suggest that you get a compass, All right? There may be also be a compass on your phone, but beware of the compass phones because I tried this with mine and you know, it, <clears throat> I would get things lined up. I was, I was doing this, I actually need to go back out there tomorrow and readjust some of these because you know, I, I figured out with my compass my, my phone compass, exactly where this basketball hoop was. And then I checked it later and was, it should be over here. No, a little bit later, it was over there. So it kind of was generally saying that this was going to be, the basketball hoop was going to be somewhere in this area, but it kept migrating around, it was driving me up a tree. Um, so if you can take a bearing on an object, you want to see like what is due east, right? Let's say due east uh, just um, that's that spot that is between the two trees. So then what you're going to do is you're going to draw in those trees here. And so you're going to be, as you work your way along here, you're going to be drawing in critical landmarks that you see across here. And you want to also put them the appropriate height. So if something is 30 degrees above the horizon, right, um, then you're going to actually draw that all the way up to here. So this tree where I was sitting, this was really big, a really big tree. And it went all the way up to 30 degrees from where I was sitting. So now you may be saying, well, how do I measure if something is 30 degrees? Well, that's where we're going to switch back to this camera because here's a really cool trick. You can use your body to help measure distances, degrees of arc across the sky. And here's the way it's going to work. You want to get which direction, how high the sun is. Right? So what you're going to do is you're going to stand with your back to your shadow, facing straight towards the sun. And with your shoulders square, you're going to hold your fist out right along the, um, 
with your bottom of your fist right on your horizon and the top of your fist is going to be so your fist at this distance is 10 degrees so what you can do is if you want to measure like you know you're gonna go 10 degrees 20 degrees 30 degrees so you're gonna go you know one let's see I have, you have to you have to be uh, there we go so you have to have your arms straight, you know, one potato, two potato, three potato, four. So you're going to count how many potatoes high it is, and what you're going to do is you're going to find that two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine potatoes actually gets you right over your own head. Right? Isn't that cool? So you can use, again, your shoulders square, stick out your potato, potato, first potato right on the horizon. You're going to hold that steady as you grab your second potato. Work your potatoes on the way up. And you can test this in, in your own house. So um, you can, if you want to kind of calibrate to make sure that, that, that your potatoes are coming in correctly, pick some object that is at your eye level, right? So my eye level is going to be right here. I'm going to put and then I'm going to stand right underneath the smoke detector. And so I put my hand on the, that point of the bird. There's one potato, two potato, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I get nine potatoes up to that point directly above my head. It works pretty well. So that's, that way you can measure how high in the sky that object is. There's another way that you can measure the, um, that object, but we'll, I'll be showing you that at the end of the video. Um, but, um, and so that will also be a, a, a lot of fun. So if you, um, if, th so this, this is just, it's the easiest, quickest way to get how high ob that object is. So you're gonna figure out where north to south that object is, the, 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 the sun is, and then how high it is. And what you're going to be doing is getting out there first thing in the morning as the sun rises on the solstice. And you're going to draw in where on your diagram the sun is coming up. And then you're going to track its location across the arc of the sky over you throughout the day to where it sets. And each time you're doing that, you're going to, you're going to draw the location where it is north-south, how high in the sky, and you'll write in the time right next to it. Okay? So, um, it is... It's going to look... This was um, kind of a dress rehearsal for this. Um, you know, some time ago I was doing this, and so I've got different locations um, for the sun as it's making its way across the sky. And um, so on, on your drawing, it's going to come up here somewhere. You're going to get your first one. You're going to then get a series of them coming up and at some point coming down. Right? And it's going to be, that arc is going to be different heights, different lengths, for depending on where you are on the face of the earth. And we're going to get to compare yours with everybody else's. It's going to be really cool. Um, so when you're out there in the field, the, in the early morning, you're going to be looking like, where in here is it coming up? You're going to draw in your sun. You're going to write in the time. Then you come back a little bit later, and it is going to be somewhere over this way now and higher. You're going to draw where it is now and right in the time. And you're going to be able to track that over time. You're going to find that there'll be points where it really surprises you how far it went between. So the more that you can kind of check in with your son, the happier you're going to be to get a nice complete arc. Now, here's a really cool thing. Everybody's going to be expecting the highest point to be at noon, right? But, um, spoiler alert, that may not be the case. So, 
you want to see what, when is it the highest in the sky? When is that? And the really weird thing is that it may not be exactly when you expect it to be, right? So you're going to get yours. Everybody else is going to um, get theirs. We'll be able to compare them, and we will have, you're going to learn something really important about what your sun does on the longest day of the year. And then by looking at the time on your first one, time on the last one, you're going to be able to calculate the day length on the longest day of the year specifically where you live. Right? At, at your latitude, what does that look like? So that's going to be, that's going to be very, very cool. Now, um, here is one more kind of really fun thing that you can do. And this, this, if you take these next steps, you're going to find when you're out there, you're going to have, this will allow you to have, uh, be even more accurate and have a lot of fun. What I'm going to suggest you do is take a stick, a straight stick, and drive it into the ground and get a level and make sure that that is square. Make sure that that is square. So you want, you want this to be vertical. All right, so you've got this vertical stick. And what I'd like you to do is to measure this stick. So we're going to call it length A. Here is length A on your stick. All right. And now I'm going to do an overhead view of this stick. Here's the overhead view of the stick. All right, there's the stick. What you're going to find when the sun comes up, you are the sun is going to be low in the sky, and the sun is going to cast a shadow out from your stick. Right. So you're going to see here's your stick, and here is the shadow of your stick. Um, this is going to be interesting for two reasons. First, if you want to get precisely what direction um, this, uh, the, the sun is coming up, what you can do is you can put your compass right next to that shadow and get the direction of that, uh, that, that exact, in, in degrees, the, the exact direction that your um, the, the, the sun is coming up. And then you can compare that around here, and you'll be able to get it at exactly the right point. You'll find that getting exactly the right point gets a little bit tricky when the sun is higher in the sky. Right? Also, when the sun gets higher in the sky, sometimes potatoing can be confusing. And that's when this other really cool trick is going to come in. So you can get the direction that the sun is very easily this way with your vertical stick. But here's the other cool thing, because your stick is going to be casting a shadow. So here I'm putting the shadow out along the ground. All right? So if the shadow is here, that means if the sun is up here, so from the top of that is a straight line to the tip of your shadow. And what you do, we're going to call this B, right? And then what you do is a little math problem. You are going to do A, oops, let's keep our color coding system correct here. You're going to do A divided by B. Put another way, that's A divided by B. B. And that is going to equal a number. And what this number, this number is going to be really, really special. Because if you take this number and you plug it into a trigonometric table of, of, of tangents, you'll be able to take your number, let's say you got 3.44. That means the angle is 
19 degrees up to the sun. You will have figured out, using your trigonometry table, this angle right here. So if it's been a long time since you have done trigonometry, this is just a really fun opportunity to get some cool math in, in your world. So you're going to get a number here, you plug that into the tangent table, that is going to give you the angle right here. Let's say this because is, is, um, is, is 19 degrees, then what you would do is you would come to your point along the bottom. Uh, let's say it's right here. And I'm going to go up 10. I'm going to go up here is my 20 line. I'm going to put in my sun right there and write in the time. All right, so you can do trigonometry. So what I've done to have fun, I just, I went to NASA's website and I downloaded a tangent table. And um, I'll put a link to this up on the Nature Journal Club Facebook site. Um, you can print this out and tape it into your journal. And how much fun is that? Isn't that cool? Right, so there it is, a little tangent table. And that's going to allow you to get that angle. The, and this angle is the angle to the top of the post, the angle to the sun. Isn't that beautiful? So um, this is going to be is going to be really interesting because um, here we go. So solstices, equinoxes, these are a really big deal for us as naturalists. A, a long time ago, our ancestors kept such careful track of this. They built Stonehenge and stuff like that just to celebrate these key moments. You know, or you keep track of like the, the light comes through this crack in the rock and it hits this point right back here on the solstice. This is a critical day. You need to keep track of these things. Where's the sun in the sky? Or else you're not going to plant your plants on the right times. So as a naturalist, keeping track of these big, these big systems and things is, is really important for us to do to kind of have a sense of what is going on cosmically with the sun and the tilt of our planet so that, um, th you know, that we can keep track of our, our, our seasons. So we're all going to do this together. And people in the northern hemisphere, people in the southern hemisphere, after the solstice, we're going to compare our notes. And you're going to see what these patterns are doing in other places. I'm going to ask you folks to predict what you think you're going to see, right? And we're going to try to get somebody to write in and, and do this who, is, who lives above the Arctic Circle. And we're going to try to get somebody else to do this um, in Antarctica. What will that look like? So can you get above the Arctic Circle? Decide right now what do you think this is going to look like below the Antarctic Circle, right? What's that going to be like on this day? And then we're going to track this at solstices, equinoxes. It's going to be cool, all right? So that's our project. Now, here is here's the, another kind of strange thing. Um, the, the, the solstice is coming on June 20th. All right, so sometimes people think, like, it, it's, it's like everybody says, it's got to be the 21st. This, this year, it's on the 20th. So we're all doing this on June 20th, 2020, and we'll see the results that we get. Are you ready? All right. I'll see you on the solstice, everybody. Thanks for watching.